Πριν από 13-14 χρόνια κυκλοφόρησε αυτό το υπέροχο βιβλίο. Χαμένος παράδεισος, Lost Paradise ήταν ε, το ο, αρχικός του τίτλος, έτσι, ο τίτλος που έδωσε ο Giles Milton σε αυτό το βιβλίο, το οποίο επανεκδίδεται από τις εκδόσεις του Μίνοα με αφορμή τη συμπλήρωση 100 χρόνων από τη μικρασιατική καταστροφή. Ε, ο Giles Milton είναι δημοσιογράφος και συγγραφέας, είναι Βρετανός. Στο Λονδίνο θα τον συναντήσουμε. Hello, Giles. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Um, we're very honored to have you uh, in our show, but I I'm asking you before, uh, before shooting, uh, if you have any roots in Minor Asia. What, what no, was I the reason? No, 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 no roots. Family there, no, no. So. What happened? How that comes from? I was fascinated in this um, major sort of episode in history, which is so little known in my own country, um, and uh, coming immediately after the First World War, the horrors of the First World War. And um, this is a story that is deeply divisive. If you read a Greek account um, or a Turkish account, you will get two completely different stories <laughs> yes. of what took place in Smyrna um, in 1922. And I wanted to focus on, on really two communities um, who lived in the city. That is uh, the Levantine uh, community. This was a people of European descent, often French, British, Italian, who'd come to the city and made their fortunes there. And I wanted to focus on them and also on the American community in, um, in living in Smyrna at the time, because these two communities, they were not affiliated to any nationality. They didn't particularly support the Greeks. They didn't particularly support the Turks. And so in looking at their stories, I was hoping to be able to get to the truth of what really happened um, in Smyrna in 1922. When you are writing, do you want to be fair and exact to, to... Uh, g give all the information with no feelings. Exactly. What I wanted to find out, you know, particularly the most controversial subject uh, of what happened in Smyrna was the Great Fire of Smyrna and who set fire to uh, the city, which of course completely destroyed it. And so um, I w wanted to go to the eyewitness accounts of Americans and Levantines because I felt, yes, they had no axe to grind, if you, if you like. They, uh, they were likely to be the most reliable and independent witnesses of what took place. Mm -hmm. So the, the shape of the story comes from the Levantines in your life, I mean, in your research. Yeah, First, I, I mean, because you wrote it uh, at uh, the beginning of the book, that you met uh, the Turkish, the Greeks, but first you met a Levantine. Yes, I'm, I mean, I wanted to meet representatives from um, each community and, of course, use eyewitness documents mm -hmm. from Greeks, from Turks, from Armenians. Um, but um, particularly the, the Levantine community particularly interested me because, uh, as I say, they, they didn't really, they didn't take sides. They were not um, partisan. And so I felt that their accounts would be the most reliable and most trustworthy um, eyewitness accounts of what happened. Okay. Uh, and um, what are the feelings now, those years after the first edition of the book? Well, of course, we're coming up to the 100th anniversary mm -hmm. of the uh, catastrophe. And um, I think often with, with, with events which are so important and so horrific, it takes several generations before uh, we're able to stand back and really look at what actually happened, what took place. When this book came out, I went to America and did a publicity tour in America. And I met many people whose families had originally come from Smyrna and that they'd fled in 1922, 1923, and they'd built, built new lives in the United States. And what I found very interesting is that many of the people I spoke to or, or who came to my lecture, um, they knew absolutely nothing about this period from history. Mostly, because, uh, sorry for the interruption, yeah. mostly, you said in your book, Greeks and Armenians. Yes, 
These were Greeks and Armenians who'd, who'd gone to build their new lives in America. They knew almost nothing about what had happened to their families because this story was so painful for the grandparents and great grandparents who'd fled that they refused ever to talk about it. So it was strange to, to, to meet descendants of these families who knew nothing about their family history. They knew nothing about what life was like, this rather idyllic life was like um, in, the, in the period before 1922. Okay, let's come to 2022 not uh, about the century from that catastrophe, but f uh, about the war mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Um, American President Biden and some others not much in Europe uh, talking about genocide. Mm -hmm. uh, those days we're talking about the Armenians' genocide. Uh, no one is spelling that word about the uh, Greeks? I think there's a very strong case to be made for calling what happened um, a genocide uh, against the Greeks uh, uh, with horrific violence uh, meted out, uh, entire villages being destroyed, their populations being killed. Um, and of course, you know, look at what happened on the key side of Smyrna. You had hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of desperate refugees. We're seeing the same thing in Ukraine now, but in, in 1922, it was focused on the key side of Smyrna. And um, I suppose for me, the sort of great, the cynicism of the Western powers at the time, notably America and Great Britain, who had, um, you know, there were 21 warships in the Bay of Smyrna. And for days, they did absolutely nothing. They refused to have any part in the, any humanitarian relief for the Greeks and Armenians, largely, who were on the key side of Smyrna. Why did they do nothing? Because they could see that Mustafa Kamal Ataturk was winning, and they were hoping to strike rich uh, petrol and oil deals with the new the new um, regime that was going to be installed in Turkey. And so they didn't want to be seen to be aiding the Greeks uh, and the Armenians. And, and I suppose that side of the story, uh, we, we've all grown used to cynical foreign policy in the West. But for me, that sort of beggared belief, it was so, um, so horrific just to turn, turn a blind eye to an absolute tragedy that was taking place on the key side of Smyrna. That cynical behavior came from uh, Europeans, mostly or Americans, both sides? I think, I think it was both. Um, and I, I certainly looked at accounts of both, but particularly the British were um, instructed to do nothing. But I believe the Americans also, on the warships I'm talking about, the captains were told to do nothing. And, you know, the, the foreign powers uh, in the West had been hugely implicated in this story already because, I mean, the British were supplying an awful lot of the weaponry that was being used in Asia Minor. And of course, when King Constantine came back onto the throne, uh, a much reviled figure in England, uh, in, in Great Britain, they stopped the supply of weaponry to the Greek army, which was, a, of course, an, a disaster for the Greek, Greek army. And this is the point where the battle in Asia Minor takes a dramatic turn uh, for the worse for the Greeks. What's coming next from you? I'm Giles. currently writing <laughs> I'm currently writing a book um, about the allied mission to Stalin during the war. This is the oh. British and Americans were working inside the Kremlin, uh, working literally with uh, Stalin. It's fascinating because of Stalin had been uh, hated and, uh, you know, the, the, the monstrous dictator um, in, in Russia suddenly became the, the Western power's greatest ally in the Second World War. Um, so it's a fascinating story. And it really, um, I hope these people, these Americans and British worked very closely with Stalin and, and came to know him very closely. And it uh, gives a fascinating insight into the sort of demonic personality of, of, of Joseph Stalin. Uh, it's almost forbidden for us to call Stalin a dictator, but... <laughs> yes, well, well for Stalin, from being seen as a terrible dictator, suddenly became the friendly Uncle Joe figure. Mm. Um, this was deliberately coined, this phrase was deliberately coined to, um, to make him seem more appealing to the West, to the Allies. Lost Paradise, that's your book, 
coming uh, 14 years after first published in Greek. Η μετάφραση είναι του Αλέξη Καλοφολιά από τις εκδόσεις του Μίνωα. Thank you so much, Giles. Thank you very much for having me on. Λοιπόν, αυτό είναι το βιβλίο για τα 100 χρόνια από τη μικρασιατική καταστροφή που θα το βρείτε, όπως είπαμε, από τις εκδόσεις του Μίνωα. Πάμε στα social και ερχόμαστε.